couple of weeks ago, we had a video we declared winter dead. And for the most part, that has been the case. But there are indications as we are ready to transition into spring that winter could come roaring back to life. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegg is back with you in this video. We are going to talk about the resurgence of winter after a big-time blowtorch event in terms of the warmth surging through the nation's midsection right now. We'll show you the short-term warm-up again for most of the U.S. and Canada. Then we're going to venture into the long range, and we're going to show you the return of the colder air. First, we'll show you the temperature anomalies, and then if you want to know some of the meteorology behind it, that's going to be a little bit later on. So we'll give you what you want, and then if you want to find out why that's happening, we'll break that down closer to the end of the video. Now, at the end of the video, if you want the short-term forecast, we're going to go over the high resolution future radar and future temperatures for both the U.S. and Canada. So stick around at the end of the video for that. I'll also have the chapters in the description. So if you want to kind of bounce around a little bit, you can do so. But I hope you hang with us uh, through the entire video. If you want to stay updated on the weather, hit that subscribe button for me. That'd be awesome. If you find this content helpful, hit that thumbs up button. That really does help us out a lot. Small ask. And I would love to know where you're tuning in from and what the weather is doing where you are. Post that in the comments for me and we can have this weather conversation. All right, so here we go. We're starting with Tuesday, March 5th, the day we are recording this video. And here are the temperature anomalies. Again, the, this is the departure from normal. So again, this is the short-term warmth really from uh, Minnesota into parts of New Mexico, getting into Texas, down here, anywhere where there's yellow and orange, we're a little bit above normal. The big time warmth here is up towards Lake Erie, Pennsylvania, into Ohio, western New York. We have some colder than normal temperatures in the Pacific Northwest. Now, we're going to continue to watch these anomalies build here over the next few days. We do have a little bit of cold, and we'll see, show you some snowy weather towards the end of this video. For us into the Rockies, that's where we have some of the cold. Again, we're a little warm out here, nothing too crazy at this point. It's once we get into the second week of March here that we start to have the warmth really begin to build once again. You see it right there in the darker reds, especially into the upper Midwest and Northern Plains. Again, that is the byproduct of El Nino that we will continue ha to have. Now, it's going to be towards the end of the month, really that transition from the second to third week where we, it looks like, could have some big-time cold coming back, again, relative to normal. So I want to show you here, this is the plot from Tropical Tidbits dot com right here and we are fast forwarding out to march 19th now you do see some colder air these these are, again are the temperature anomalies in degrees celsius so you can look at some of the things here we're seeing the blue that's where we're going to be potentially colder than normal and then where you see the darker red here and almost white and black that's where we have the warmer air now watch what happens as we transition into the second into the third week of march this is going to be on march 20th now and into march 21st you see the blues and purples coming back. Now, those are the colder than normal temperatures. Again, this is all relative to normal. So cold in March is a little bit different than cold in January and February, of course. But you see the return of some of that colder air as we move into the third week of March. Now, one of the things as we look into models, I always say, again, you can't bank on models 384 hours out. Now, that's what we are doing right here, but you have to look at some other things. So now we're going to talk about some of the meteorology behind this setup here. And I want to show you a bunch of squiggly lines here. And my fellow weather nerds know exactly what this is. This is going to be another story here. This is going to be as we get into the third week of March. That was the GFS long range. This is actually a climate model here. And you see this ridge building out west trough into the east that's a story that we are going to talk about right now i want to show you this let me get my screens all to line up and we're looking at the arctic oscillation we'll do a brief explainer on what the arctic oscillation means or is and what it controls but you see this kind of negative look we characterize these oscillations positive or negative and you see right here where, where we stand now that black line we're a little bit negative but then you see this dashed line and all these other red lines that's the ensemble forecast showing that the arctic oscillation goes really negative now what that means for us is when it's positive like where it's been you see let me go back to the uh thing that you can we've kind of been bouncing around but a lot of this has been super positive for the last few weeks which is why we've been very very warm a positive arctic oscillation means that we have a very strong jet stream when it's it's kind of counterintuitive, but when the jet stream is really, really strong, it's not very wavy. That ribbon of very strong air upward jet aircraft fly is very tightly packed up toward the pole. So it keeps all of the cold air right along the poles. All the warmth is able to kind of chill and surge into the south. 
Now, when we have that Arctic Oscillation dip negatively, gets into the negative side, we have a weaker jet stream, which allows for more waviness. When we have jet streams that are wavy, we typically see more storms because we have the cold air flowing south from the Arctic and into Canada and to the northern tier of the United States. And then a wavy jet stream allows the warmth to surge up from the Caribbean, from the Gulf of Mexico and the extreme southwest Atlantic. You increase that temperature difference in the atmosphere. We get those bigger storms to develop. And then we also mix that cold and warm air. We get these blasts of colder air when that Arctic oscillation goes negative and you see it here over the next week or so we really get that thing to tank a little bit as we get into that first week of March typically when we see that phase change it it differs or we have to wait about a week to two weeks for the actual ramification of that phase change so that's a lot of meteorological mumbo jumbo there to kind of show you that there is a little bit of proof there there's a little bit of reasoning for why i'm showing you the model again i never like to bank on models especially as we get into hurricane season or those winter storms you see people posting those models everywhere it's i don't want to say it's okay but if there's context with it you got to show the reasoning for it if that's something that's possible that's what we do on this channel so that's what you're going to get here you're going to get the meteorology and you're going to get the science but you see it right there that would argue for some cold coming in and then there is the model depicting that now another oscillation that we typically look at especially in the winter time is going to be the north uh, Atlantic oscillation. We want this one to be negative if you're a fan of cold and snow. We have it a little bit negative. This controls the blocking over Greenland. It's one of the ingredients you need for a northeast snowstorm. Now, as I'm saying this, and I'm saying that winter could make a comeback here, the deal with this, or be kind of raised from the dead, emerge back here. The deal with this is you have to remember that it's late March. We've seen this over the past couple of years where we've had that kind of crummy winter pattern. It's been mild through the typical cold months. And then as we switch into spring, then we get that pattern we've all been waiting for if you're a snow and cold lover. And it looks like we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to displace it from the astronomical springtime as the sun angle gets higher into the sky, of course. It is much, much harder to sustain winter and to sustain snow especially you needed to really come at night and snow heavily to do that but one thing that we are talking about here is the cold the other thing that we look at is going to be the pacific north american model and that looks like it is going to be positive i showed you this a little bit earlier and this is kind of the sign when the pacific north american oscillation i should say is positive we get this ridge to build into the west like what we have depicted here for that third week of march and that's going to be march 18th to march 25th um and then we have the trough in the east so we can sustain some cold for a little bit anyway it looks like on that time frame as we get into the east or as we get into that third week of march so that's going to be something uh that we are going to watch we'll revisit this in a few weeks during that time frame to see if this forecast works out or not again it's never a slam dunk but when you have long-range models uh going in that direction when you have some climate models arguing for that as well and then some of the oscillations that kind of control how the weather patterns behave that we kind of monitor is also suggesting that you start to latch on a little bit so yeah i know it we declared winter dead here. I declared it dead. For the most part, that's what it's going to be. And as we kind of flip from winter into spring, it might try to, again, come back from the dead here. All right. So here is the high-resolution future radar now. Just to talk about the weather over the next 48 to 72 hours. And we have the unsettled stretch brought on by El Nino continuing through the deep south into the north Gulf Coast, into the southeast corner. That rain kind of wraps up and moves through uh, the Roanoke Valley into western Pennsylvania, upstate New York as well. Some crummy weather uh, coming in that direction. We have a little bit of snow around Winnipeg on Thursday morning at 7 o'clock. And then some unsettled weather for us through Denver into Kansas City, Oklahoma. City. This is the snow that I was referring to earlier into the video, and you see that little burst of snow uh, into the panhandle of Nebraska, into the Rockies, into parts of Utah as well. It's going to be rain for us into Kansas City, St. Louis, moving up into Chicago, and then there you see a nice little burst of heavy snow, a little banding coming up, maybe even some snow showers into southeast Minnesota. It's likely not going to be sustained, but then we have that unsettled or inclement weather moving up into Chicago. In terms of the temperature, again, you see where this white color is. Now, we mentioned about that positive Arctic oscillation where the white color is up towards the Arctic Circle. That's where the really, really cold stuff is. Now, it is pretty cold uh, for us into Edmonton, into Calgary. You see 20 below Fahrenheit, 29 degrees below zero uh, uh, tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, March 6th, uh, Celsius, that is. 
Four degrees below zero in Bear Skin Lake. That's going to be 20 Celsius uh, degrees below zero. Winnipeg, we are 15 degrees Celsius below zero. But for uh, by and large, we have a lot of warmth hanging on. I mean, still temperatures around the freezing mark or just below in, Mar in early March in the Twin Cities. That's still pretty warm. And look at the warmth surging into Texas, San Antonio, Houston. We're back into the low to mid 80s. Uh, pretty seasonable in south and central Florida. Jacksonville, we're near 80. Uh, it is cool up in Boise for us in Billings. And some of that chill starts to come back in. We showed you the anomalies again, some of those colder anomalies into the west. We do start to get a little bit of cold building into the Intermountain West and Pacific Northwest. You see it there, 7 o'clock on Thursday morning. Let me get all my telestrations out of the way. But there we go, uh, 14 above uh, by 7 o'clock on Thursday morning. So we do get some of that chill to build back, but we have relative warmth uh, surging into the deep south. Alrighty, guys, we're going to be watching that. We're going to be paying attention here to that third week of March. We're going to see if that forecast works out or not. Some of the things argue for it. A lot of things argue for it. But, of course, you all know it. Mother Nature ha does her own thing. And forecasting, especially in the long range, certainly keeps us all humble. That's for sure. So it's going to be something fun to watch for. And we are going to see if we, in due fact, get some winter to return. At least the colder air to return as we get ready to flip the page into astronomical spring thank you guys so much for tuning in if you found this content helpful give me a thumbs up if you want to stay updated on all things weather through north america hit that subscribe button and again i'd love to know where you're tuning in from what the weather is doing where you are living or visiting post in the comments and we will catch you next time